Um, is there a, a pattern? Is there a particular reason you think that this that this has happened? Is it growing pains for a program? Yeah, actually, last year was my first recruiting class. Recruiting is done in advance, sure. and so um, so like for example, we're recruiting the class of 2013 and 14. So that's how far in advance it's done. So um, so this the last last year's class and this year's class are my recruits. And so what we're learning is that BC is a very different place. You know, there's there's challenges with the weather. We're the team that's furthest away from all the other teams in the ACC. And so um, you know, we we have had some turnaround with some of our players. Those players expressed that they wanted to go back home. Um, so they either went back home to the south or wherever they were from. Um, they wanted more of a social kind of atmosphere. Um, so we have one transfer to St. John's, and where which is access to New York. Um, and so we've kind of revamped what we're doing in terms of recruiting. And so we're recruiting the New York, New Jersey, Philly, kind of Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine area, because that's within driving distance of Boston College. So you know, players get homesick. And just drive home for the weekend. So it's made it's made a difference because, um, and, I, and I think Boston College has done a great job of keeping the best players at home, two of which are sitting over there. And so when they put on a jersey that says Boston College, it means something. It means a little bit more than to a player that is from maybe North Carolina or a player that's from maybe California who puts on that jersey. You know, they're playing for the pride of their home court because it's from there. And, um, and obviously the players who are from different places, we teach them that history so that they can have that same pride in their school. But it's, it's a little bit different, as you know, when you when you have kind of like your hometown kids there. So that's kind of the change that we've made within our recruiting, and you'll see that reflected in our next recruiting classes. Um, for whatever reason, California is a good place for us to recruit to because um, there's a large population of our student body, not even student athletes, but just student body who are from California. A lot of them go to private schools and they're looking for a prestigious institution and Boston is close to the water. So for some reason that works for California kids. Um, Denver players as, as well as Minnesota players. Cold weather areas. Yeah. <laughs> So we're 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 getting it. You know, there's a certain type of kid that you have to recruit to Boston College, which makes it challenging as coaches because you know sometimes we just can't go after the top ranked or best players in the nation. They have to be the best players for Boston College. Best fits. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of scouting report, obviously you have a fine recruiting class this year. There's there's lots of ranked players. Um, I don't even have to ask you if your freshmen are going to play because they have to mm -hmm. play or else you won't feel the team, mm -hmm. basically. Can you talk about a little bit about the one the freshmen who've impressed you the most and no, the um, this year? Every day it's a different freshman. <laughs> so that's a difficult question for me. Um, I would say um, Kristen Doherty is a player to keep your eye on. She's been the most consistent. She's caught on very early to our system. Um, she seems comfortable on the floor with the rest of our players and we've shuffled different ones in just to kind of get a feel for different combinations that I can throw out on the court this year. Um, but she's a, an incredible scorer and we're learning that she's also a good defender. So her role on our team will be defense from the perimeter. She's a big guard. There's a lot of guards in the ACC that play inside out, especially Maryland's team. Um, that gave us trouble last year. And so her role will be huge in terms of defense. And that's something that she has control over every single night. It's different from having a shooting role where you may go through a shooting slump or somebody scouting you and playing you tighter or boxing one. Defense, you can control that every single night. So I think she will have success in our program with her role. Um, Shira Brown is a player from Brooklyn and um, she brings a lot of athleticism to our team. Um, they were tested with our strength and conditioning coach and she had the quickest times. Um, her vertical jump is extremely high. Um, so she'll bring athleticism. She's a rebounder from the guard position. Um, is she a point? No, she's a small forward. Um, but, you know, she jumps with our post players for rebounds and, and they're pretty good rebounders. So that's what she'll bring to our team. Uh, we have Katie Zinovich, which is a player from Massachusetts who grew up looking up to Carolyn Murray. And now she's an opportunity to play with her for a year. And I've challenged them to pass 
the torch, uh, for Carolyn to pass the torch to Katie Zinovich. And um, this is a kid who in the first week of practice um, knocked out swords <laughs> and she um, gave our other post player five stitches over her eyebrow and a concussion. So this kid is a bruiser and um, she's not shy at all, you know, she's just kind of getting in there and, and it's very intimidating to play with these two. Um, quite frankly, we've lost some post players because they felt like we're never going to get to play here. These two players are really good I'm never going to be a starter here. Whereas the two younger players that we have, they're so hungry to learn of other post players that we have, but at the same time, they challenge them every single day. And so, um, so it's a, it's a good thing that we have going. Um, Karina Chapman, she's a player that's furthest away. Uh, she's from New Mexico. And um, we, we do a really good job of just making her feel like she fits in and that she's at home for the weekend. She we assign her to a, a teammate. She goes home with them. So um, we're just trying to make sure that she's not getting homesick and that she feels at home at BC. But um, this is a kid that's very versatile. She could play. She will eventually play the small forward position for us and make that transition. But this year she'll play at the power forward position. She can face the basket, shoot the three. Um, but just very positive, upbeat, hard working. I mean she just goes hard nonstop. The minute you sleep she'll score. And so um, so just great post player to have, you know, on our team. Um, we also have um the mom is like Tiffany Ruffin is a freshman point guard this year. And um, and I've been tough on her since practice started just because I have to get her ready, you know. Um, she will play the point for us as well as Carrie Shields who is um, a returner and um, a shooting guard for us, but played point guard in high school. And uh, she's doing a great job at the point position, so her and Tiffany Ruffin can kind of help Jack Tillman out in that position. Um, Tiffany is a player where when you watch her, you can't see everything that she can do in one game. You know, she'll focus on one thing. You know, so the first time I saw her play when I was recruiting her, um, she had an incredible scoring night. You know, so I said, okay, this kid can score, but you know, can she pass? Can she both of them, you know, can she do all the other things that we need her to do? And then the next game, um, her teammates were scoring, so she didn't look to score. But she has some incredible passes. She was a one-man press breaker. I said, okay, this this kid can break a press in the ACC, you know. And then the next game, you know, I saw her do something completely different. They were playing zone, and she was directing traffic. She was a little more vocal, um, so she has a full package. It's just a matter of um, her becoming comfortable on a team where you have three dominant seniors who are very vocal leaders, you know, to feel comfortable with, with leading the team as a core general. So that's where we're trying to get her to the point uh, where she's comfortable doing that by the time our season starts. Um, the, two tra the two transfers that we have, Tessa Holt, transfer from Florida. Mm -hmm. um, she's a point guard, very vocal point guard. Um, she is our CEO on our team. We've, we've given her that title as a chief energy officer. Um, and as well as we have maybe six other players who are assigned to that role, but she kind of spearheads that. And um, she just brings lots of energy. She goes hard. Um, she's always encouraging everyone. So, I mean, it's, it's been a joy to have her so far. Um, and then Alyssa Presley is on our team to transfer from Colorado. And this is a player who is um, tough as nails. She's the type of player that you don't want to play against, but you're happy she's on your team. And I've been looking for a while for a player like that. I think every team needs one. And she's that player for us. So we're, we're excited to have her and the work ethic that she brings. Um, she's a scorer's mentality and a go-to mentality. So we're, we're excited about that addition to our team as well. So you're right, we're the team that you know the most about and the least about, and we like it that way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> with your experienced players, have you seen them do anything, add anything to their games as seniors? I have. Um, Carolyn Soares have, has added, um, in the past, um, sometimes she struggled with recognizing double teams when they were there versus when to score. This year, she's gotten much, much better at that and her ability to pass out of the double. We've surrounded her with many, many shooters. And so, um, so teams will kind of have to pick and choose how they're going to defend her, um, you know, with her shooting such a high percentage from the floor. Um, if they choose to double, she's making very accurate passes right in the shooter's pocket for our shooters to kind of knock down their shots. And so, um, so we've got some inside-outside basketball going. Uh, so that's the area that she's improved on, which I think will only help her even more. 
um, and, and make everyone around her better. And their percent, their percentages will be better. Um, Stephanie Murphy, I think, has stepped up in the, in the area of leadership. She's more vocal. Um, she is actually taking the freshmen under her wing, as well as all of our seniors. But that's that's the biggest um, area that I've seen her grow in. Um, and she's holding herself accountable. Um, she is. Um, they're, they're coming to me and they're saying, Coach, can we? come in at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, they're just hungry. They're chasing the more right now. And so they're they're in a really good space, but I particularly love where she's at. You know, she, she understands that it's going to be hard. She's embracing that it's going to be hard, and she's accepting the challenge. So we're, we're excited about her mentality. And this off season was her first year, actually, working out the entire summer. Um, usually she has some challenges with her knees, and so she has the <laughs> trainers making her rest, and she's not able to do all of her workouts. She had an incredible off season, and so um, that's only going to help her um, with her movement, with her agility on the court, um, with her ability to transition from offense to defense quicker. And, and I've seen a difference in our in our practices so far in terms of her movement. Um, she was limited a little bit last year by her movement, whereas this year she doesn't have those restrictions, so it's showing in her game. And then Jack Toman, I'm sorry, the last one, Jack Toman, um, I think she's going to be um, the biggest surprise this year, not to us, but to other people. Um, she is um, being a true floor general right now. She's um, very vocal, different style of leadership. Carolyn. Um, Carolyn is more of an encourager. She's going to give you the specific details of what needs to be done, whereas Jack will just get in your shirt and tell you, tell you how it is without biting her tongue. And we have some players that need the balance of both. And, and we have that with our staff, and now we have that reinforcement with our, our leaders on our team. Um, she's actually looking to score more, so she's being very assertive. Um, and we're running some of the same plays we ran last year, and she's finding opportunities to score more within those same sets um, without it happening to be a play for her or set screens. You know, she's, there's opportunities for her to score, and she's finding them this year. So, um, so she's in a good space as well. I really like where our senior class is right now. They're, they, they want a good season. They want to have, they want to end their career on a good note. They understand that they need the freshmen in order to make that happen. And they have um, embraced the whole process and everything that comes with that.